Welcome to another episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. I'm your fat guy, Andy Baker, and with me for the uh, start of the show, we've got Mishka Shabali. Say hello, Mishka. Hello, Mishka. <laughs> so we're doing a new format, which we're trying out. It was actually Mishka's idea, so uh, thank you very much for that. And it was actually a good one, which uh, is a record. I know, it's a first time for everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Now, you have been put on death row. Finally. What crime did you commit to get there? Man, I've been thinking about this a lot. And the, um, you know, the sort of the obvious one is uh, found guilty of assassinating a prominent uh, American political figure. Okay. Who, who, who did you get? And, uh, but I decided that I'm going to, I'm going to leave that one out, uh, for somebody else. I, you know, it just feels like cherry picking or the, you know, the low hanging fruit. Um, so instead it's still a murder. Okay. Um, the, uh, we found this fucking, that stray cat in my neighborhood that like couldn't walk Yes. and it found out later super sweet cat but couldn't move her hind legs or her tail found out later that somebody fucking shot her once paralyzed her and then just left her there to die so the crime i have been found guilty of a uh, horrific crime uh really sort of just sort of stunned the american public in its brutality i found the guy who killed that cat broke his fucking back and left him in the alley to die. Cold-blooded, premeditated murder. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. Well, I mean, I, it's not it's not a crime that I can argue with. That motherfucker deserved to die a fucking worse death than that cat. And so, yeah, that guy is fucking dead. You are on death row. Um, no chance for parole. You're being executed tomorrow, in fact. You get a last meal. And what's going to happen is I am going to whatever your last meal is, I'm going to cook it. And then I'm going to give you a call back on Zoom tomorrow. And I'm going to show you what I've cooked. And then I'm going to eat it in front of you. I love the sadistic twist of this, where it's yeah. like, oh, you know, you're, you're on your way out of the world. Like you get to fucking pick one last sort of, you know, one last earthly pleasure. But this is the fucking hack oddity cooking show. So it's like, no, I, I'm just, I'm going to make what you want and then eat it in front of you. Yeah, no, no redemption ever for anyone. Yeah. So, um... So yeah, you get you get a meal. Um, what do you uh, what do you want? So I've been thinking about this a lot. The um, I decided for my last meal, the uh, the last thing that I want to eat, you know, on my on my way out of the world, I'm gonna go with uh, Ra Ra Imler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for everybody else. Um, <laughs> Rara Imler is a comedian, stroke sex worker, stroke uh, erotic dancer, stroke me. Friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of ours. Um, who we met a in culinary Austin. delicacy. Yeah, I met in Austin a couple of years ago at Altercation, and I think you've known for longer than that. Um, unfortunately, I think things like consent and... <laughs> And you know my culinary skills, <laughs> and also your cunnilingus skills <laughs> come into this as well. So I think we might have to uh, skip over the the cannibalism and go straight to something that I can actually cook. So I thought about this way too much when I was running. Not raw, raw. Well, okay, raw, raw too, but also food. And uh, and I was thinking that you know it should be a meal that sort of like informed my life a little bit or informed who I am. Or so. I worked at International House of Pancakes when I was like 18 for like whatever year and a half. Two I know, years. I read your book. Yeah, fuck, five years too late. Very good book. The, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I remember going in there. So I, I, so it's like, it has to has to be a fucking diner meal because okay. I feel like that's like, there's nothing- You are, you're a human diner meal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, um, and I, you know, I did like, I hate, it was a miserable time in my life and it sort of calcified me into the fucking reprehensible misanthrope that I am now. But like working at IHOP and like, you know, pan flipping eggs and cooking bacon and hash browns and shit like that, you do fall in love with that style of cuisine Absolutely. and that cooking. And then like, 
Um, and then touring all over the country and stuff, like I would eat at diners all the time and I just fucking loved it. So it, it's got to be diner food. Um, and I'm going to do a specific recreation, actually, which is after the last time that I quit or got fired from IHOP, mm -hmm. I went in there one time because it was like across the street from my house. And I got, um, I think I had like $8, eight or $9. And I got uh, chicken fried steak and eggs with hash browns and like French toast on the side. And right. I was so fucked up and hung over and I hadn't eaten in forever. And I like scarfed it down. And then as soon as I like got it all down, I just felt that like rumbling in my stomach where I was like, I don't know if like, I don't know if, <laughs> if I don't know what's going to happen. What happened is I walked out into the parking lot, fucking threw it all up, got mocked by a homeless dude. <laughs> And I didn't have another fucking nine or ten dollars to go in there and get another meal. Like I just didn't have that fucking money. Okay. So um so I would task you with remaking me. Oh my god, I thought you were gonna say you ate your own fucking vomit. No, no, no. That's a different that's a different story. That's a different story. I really thought that's where you were going. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's effectively what we'll be doing here so um so basically i would want chicken fried steak yep eggs over medium yep uh hash browns hang on eggs over medium that's like fried sunny side up and then just flipped just before you finish them flipped and you hold it for 20 seconds yeah okay over easy is 10 seconds yep the um and uh a side of French toast, and then the the special part that's going to put this uh, dish over the edge is okay. it's to be served with uh, with the alcohol that made me throw up, which is uh, Carlo Rossi, which is it's like the worst. Carlo Rossi is actually a, it's 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 alcohol that's made by a glass factory. They own. They make the bottles. The bottle is the real product, and then they were like, "Fuck it! If we put a thing in this, we'll, we'll throw some poison in it." Well, yes. well right. and it's right. basically the alcohol version of Kool Aid because it's just like it's like rubbing alcohol or grain alcohol and like fucking purple food coloring. Oh so God. I don't know if they have like cheap shit like hobo red wine in yeah. the UK. I'll be able to find some. Yeah. yeah, but so that's that's what I want. I want the chicken fried steak that I threw up with the fucking uh the carlo rossi that made me puke it up okay well i've never made chicken fried steak before so there's a good chance it's gonna look like throw up <laughs> all right perfect right on. we got right your on. meal so in the next couple of days i will be giving you a call back with your meal in front of me hopefully um and we'll have a quick sort of go over check it out and then i'll eat it in front of you and you don't get to have any wait <laughs> this sucks <laughs> Another lost day, another lost year, another chopped onion to cover up the tears, another dream dead, another loss on the books, another fat guy cooks. Okay, so you've seen the video, you know what's going on. I've got to cook a chicken fried steak, some French toast, some hash browns, some eggs, and it's all to be served with a bottle of Carlo Rossi, which I don't have, or I'm not even sure you can get in this country. So I think the closest equivalent is gonna be a big bottle of the cheapest red plonk that you can get from the nearest supermarket, which I have done. This is called Fruity Red from Tesco, and it was three pounds for an 11% bottle of wine. So I'm not gonna serve it with it because that's a ridiculous idea, and that's not what Mishka did. From what I gather, Mishka drank it all, 
and then decided to eat his dinner. So I'm going to drink this or attempt to while cooking Mishka's dinner and then I'm going to eat his dinner and then I'm going to see if I throw it up or not. This is a fucking terrible idea. But you know. Oh. It tastes like if somebody had decided to try and make a bottle of red wine last longer by watering it down with vinegar. Oh. So we have our wine, I've got some oil heating, which we're going to heat to about 350 Fahrenheit, about 200 Celsius, which is what we're going to do our chicken fried steak in. Now we're going to do the chicken fried steak first, because I can then put that to warm in the oven, which I'm going to put on now just to remind myself, just on low, medium low. Um, so once the chicken fried steak's done, we can put that in the oven, let that sit there for a bit while we finish, while we do the French toast. Uh, Oh, and we do the um, hash browns and eggs and stuff. So let's get on with it. Right, so for chicken fried steak, we need to make two dipping stations. We need to make a dry dipping station, which is flour and a load of seasoning. And we need to make our wet dipping station, which is buttermilk, eggs and hot sauce. So I'm going to put these together now, get them ready, and then we're going to sort our steak out. We need about a cup and a half. all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, which will give your batter a bit of floof and make it puff up a bit, make it rise slightly, so we're going to throw in a teaspoon of baking powder, a couple of teaspoons, yeah, a little bit more salt, we need some onion powder, about that much. We need some cayenne pepper, not too much, just a little bit of heat. About that. We do some black pepper and some smoked paprika. We're also going to do a big fat sprinkle of garlic powder, like so. And then we're just going to whisk this, which looks like that. We're going to whisk this all together. This is a step that most people don't take seriously. They just give it a little, you know, a little quick whisk. But you really want to take a minute and really get everything incorporated. You don't want any like big chunks of cyan, cayenne, salt, anything like that. You know, you want everything nice and distributed through your dry. Okay. That's our dry, done. So for our wet, we're gonna do one and a half cups of milk. Maybe a little bit over. That'll do. I'm going to throw a little bit of vinegar in there to make it as close to buttermilk as we can without actually buying buttermilk. I would have gone to buy buttermilk, but unfortunately I still have a broken toe, so I can only really deal with going to small supermarkets at the moment to buy shit, so just incorporate the vinegar. And then we need two eggs. And I'm just going to get this a little whisk. And then whatever your favourite hot sauce is. This is one that I've made myself, which is a mixture of all those chilies that I've got left over from doing the uh, 
Rienos chili episode. So I'm gonna throw a nice big splash of that in there. Try and get a bit of air into those eggs. Take another big plug. Ah. Oh my god. Of your horrible cheap dog shit red wine. And there is our wet, which we can put over there for now. Okay, next, steak. Okay. Wasn't really sure what piece of steak to use for this, because you don't want to use anything too expensive. So, I just got a nice big piece of rump steak. Now, I don't think we're going to use all of this because what we're going to do is we're going to tenderize it, hammer it out, which is going to make it a load easier to chew once it, because obviously it's not going through a, um, a decent frying process like directly onto the heat, it's being battered. So you need to make the meat as tender as humanly possible before you actually batter it and fry it. So first thing I'm going to do is Take the fat off. I'm going to keep this because this is really good for making um, sort of like if you want to fry something in beef fat or whatever, you chop these up, stick them in, fry them up, get the fat out. So I'll be saving that. Okay. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to score. Only lightly score the meat two directions. Now do this both sides. Only lightly, but it's just going to help with the tenderness and it's going to help when you take your first bite that you don't end up just pulling the meat outside of, um, outside of all the batter. You know when you get really shitty onion rings? and you take a bite of it and then the whole onion ring comes out of the batter and you're just left with a piece of batter, yeah, fuck that noise. So this is what we're doing to avoid that. Okay, and then we're gonna take our brand new meat mallet and we're gonna tenderize the fuck out of it and pound it as flat as we can. Nice, solid, bit of steak. Lovely. Okay, I may have let my oil go a little bit long. It's closer to about 450 Fahrenheit at the moment, which is a little bit on the hot side. So we're just going to give it a second. But let's start um, sorting our meat out. So I'm going to pop in. What we need is a little bit more space. Oh yeah, also we're just going to Come on. Season our steak. Gonna salt it. Both sides. And just give it. Put a little bash up on that side too. Okay, so this is going to cool down the oil when it goes in, so I'm going to throw it in and then I'm going to put the oil back on the heat and check the uh, temperature again. So we start off by going dry first, so we're going into our flour and we are making sure every nook and cranny of our steak is floured well. That looks good to me. Really hope I can get this in the pan. Okay, and then we're gonna go into the wet. Same again, we're gonna make sure it's absolutely submerged and the whole thing gets a good coating. I'm just gonna let it sit in there for a second. Okay, and then 
we're going to go straight back into the dry again and again we're going to make sure that every square into this thing is completely and totally covered and then once we've done that we're going to throw in our oil but what I want is for it to still get a decent amount of time on the bottom of the pan to like nicely brown the bottom off now I also know that Mishka is uh, trying to be vegetarian at the moment or even vegan so um, hopefully watching me eat this as well is going to be a massive punch in the gut for him um, if anybody else uh, comes on the show feel free to pick um, you know, like four different things I have to cook and make my life really complicated. I will think you're a cunt for it, but you know, feel free, as many things as you like. Make my life as fucking woeful as humanly possible. Okay, we're just gonna flip this now. Wish me luck. Oh my god. Yeah. This is coming out beautiful. Okay, so about four or five minutes each side is about perfect. So we're going to take this guy out. chicken fried steak. Beautiful. While that's still hot, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of flaky salt on top because then that helps it stick to it. And then this is going to go in the oven on low until we need it. I am now going to tidy up and get ready to start with the next part of this incredibly fucking big breakfast right cleaned up that's still in the, uh, the chicken fried steak still in the oven staying warm next thing we're going to do is the french toast because it's another thing that i can finish and then put in the oven to keep warm while i uh, do the eggs and the hash browns to finish everything off so we need to oh we also need to make the gravy for the chicken as well which i'm just going to do quickly because you know you saw me do like the um the gravy for the biscuits and gravy very similar to that, if not exactly the same as that. It's just it hasn't got sausage in it. So we just need a bit of oil, maybe two or three tablespoons of oil. <sighs> Let that heat up. Then we're gonna throw in some flour, make a light roux, throw in some milk, mix that up, throw in a bit of um, salt and pepper, and that's it, that's our gravy, easy. Okay, so in here we need one and a quarter cups of milk. That's one. That's about a quarter. We're going to need three eggs. One. some cinnamon. And 
we're also going to throw in a little pinch of salt as well. Okay, we need some bread. Okay, we need a little bit of oil in our pan. Move that around. That's getting warm. A little bit of oil and we just need some butter on the side because we're going to need to keep butter in if we do extra slices. I think we're just going to do two. Take our bread, we're going for the thickest stuff that we can get with two C's. Thick as fuck. Oh wait, I'm not I'm not taking a swig for a while. Ah that actually tastes alright now. Okay, and then we're gonna take our bread and we are gonna try and soak up as much of this as we can. Put these on when they're done, and go straight in. I think we've got enough room in there to do a second one. You only want your pan on medium, you don't want to go too crazy. Okay. There we go. Okay, the other thing that I've already got ready in the background is I've uh, taken two large russet potatoes and I've grated them. And then what I've done is I've tied them into a um, a clean dishcloth like this, wrapped them in a ball, and then twisted until I've got all the water out of them that I can possibly get. So that these are now reasonably dry. So, we're going to salt and pepper these. This piece flipping, because that can taste small burning. Oh, we have a little bit of burn. It's alright, we'll survive. Tiny bit of burn on there. But, eh, I think that's alright actually. We'll call it caramelised. Very caramelised on that side. But that's not the side that we'll show. And that's cooking. French toast. Okay, so that's our French toast. It's basically eggy bread, but a bit sweeter. I'm gonna throw that in the oven. Ooh, that chicken looks good. Okay, so now we just need to do our hash browns and our eggs. Easy. So hash browns, we're just gonna get a nice handful of potatoes and throw them in. Another nice handful. Throw them in. Spread them out a little bit. And I'm just going to throw this guy on there. And then we're going to try and do our eggs in the space left behind. Yeah, don't eat raw potato, Andrew. That's ridiculous. Throw in a little bit more oil. And then you just need two eggs. Yeah. And then we just need two eggs. One. Two. 
more wine. Ugh. Fucking horrible. Turn that down all the way. Right, let's start assembling. So first, pieces of, like so, I ain't getting fancy, whipped cream, strawberries round the side, Go for some classic Aunt Jemima's around the outside for dipping, some beautiful syrup bath. Let's give it a. There we go. I don't know if that's how they do it in America, but that looks like French toast to me. Next, we need. Chicken fried steak. Turn you off. I mean, just on its own, Jesus Christ, look at that. Oh, so good. Beautiful. Mmm. Still crispy. And then we'll do a layer of gravy on top of that. A couple of hash browns. And then to make our eggs over easy, we just flip them. Give them 20 seconds like that. And then we're good to go. I need to go call Mishka and get him up on the Zoom meeting. So that's about 20 seconds for me. Just flip those. Flip that. Job done. How does that look? Is that a fucking breakfast or what? Ouch. Okay. I'll be back. All right. Hi, Mishka. What's up, dude? So I'm a little bit drunk. Um, I thought you were going to give me more time. I know. Well, unfortunately, um, I got fucking smashed on shitty <laughs> red wine, which apparently makes me lose all track of time and cook really quickly. So we're you look here. So cute. You look so cute when you're all bum drunk. <laughs> like you've not seen me fucking drunk before. <laughs> I have this much wine left. All right. That better be gone by the end of the fucking episode. No, well, I, I bought this stuff, which is called Fruity Red. <laughs> is 11% and it costs like three pounds from Tesco. <laughs> and I went up to the incredibly hot girl and said, excuse me, do you have any hobo wine? And she didn't really understand what I meant. So it's just like, what's the cheapest horrible red wine that you... Oh, oh that one. And then took me took me straight to it. So she took she like opened the like cellar door and like brought you down to the like Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> right. You wanna see what I made? Yeah, man, let's see it. All right. Look what I made. Oh, you fucking piece of shit. That looks amazing. So we have uh, a massive rump steak which has been tenderized and chicken fried. We have hash browns. Uh, we have two over easy 
Um, over medium, sorry. X, 20 seconds. Flipped on both. Dude, I can see that you fucking, you did it too. You got it right. Like whenever they, whenever I get uh, eggs in like a diner in the UK, it's like, they're always sunny side up and they're always fried in like two inches of oil. Yeah, but no, I, did it, I, I can did see it. from here that you got the consistency right. Yeah, you just want it so it's got that like slight level of jamminess, like on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, got it. And then we also have a plate of French toast with. Um, uh, <laughs> with maple syrup, uh, whipped cream, and strawberries as well. This show is a terrible idea, dude. This what is, would you like to eat first? <laughs> this is just, oh, God. Do a bite of the steak, because I, I I haven't had a steak in, like, fucking four years, man. All right, let's go. Whoop. Oh, God. The only thing that would make this better is that if you dumped all of that in your lap. Okay. I'm oh, look at it. Look at it jiggle. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Oops. I see chicken fried steak. Get a bit more gravy on that. Oh, so much salt and oil. It's all going to wind up in your beard. <laughs> this is mm. <laughs> this is just torture porn, dude. Mm. I just the re I just got in from working out too. I just did my fucking workout and fucking starving. You know that feeling that I get every time I see you without a shirt on. This tastes like the opposite of that. <clears throat> and then we'll do so, some hash brown and some egg so, and when, when like when you break the egg and the like the yolk like oozes out and it's like oh how's that look fuck you i'm i'm never doing this again mm. this, <laughs> this this sucks <laughs> Drink some of that wine too. Tell me about the wine. How's the wine? So the wine is absolutely, it, it feels like somebody got a reasonably shit bottle of red wine and then tried to stretch it out with vinegar. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's, like, it's like you're just drinking the blood of a diabetic. Yeah, that's fucking brutal, right? The, uh, let's have a bite of the French toast. Yeah. The, oh man. Let's do. Oh, oh with strawberries and whipped cream too. Nice big piece of French toast. <laughs> mm. This sucks. I, I hate this game. I feel like my face just like probably looks like one of the, like a guy in a jack shack, like just staring at like, <laughs> It's like, oh, do it, do it. <laughs> Poetry, torture porn. Lick, lick your lips. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, man. Look, all I'm saying is that I am absolutely 100% willing to do a complete redo of this when you finally get back over here. And I can do it for you in person and you can eat it as a thank you for sitting through all of this the uh this is the thing man is that like i've been you know i've been like worried about it. you know back in the day i was worried about like hanging out with you and joby and shit like that because i was like oh i'm gonna end up fucking relapsing and then i realized i'm never gonna go back to alcohol but i will like meat laps <laughs> just I think like you're allowed to look we the fact that you've never drank around me even though me and you have been out on some fucking pretty epic benders means that you're pretty safe i think in that regard but um yeah no we're, we're feeding you meat next time you come here right mishka thank you very much for doing this um i really appreciate it anybody who anybody who's a fan of mine who i didn't steal off of mishka which is probably about five percent of the people that watch this Please check out Mishka Shibali online. Check out his books. Check out his music. Um, when the world gets back to normal, go and sign one up for one of his writing classes at Yale, and uh, and generally give him money for being, you know, alive and still doing art in a world that doesn't respect it or give a fuck. I'm never doing this again.
I'm, I'm never. Oh, you don't is, have to. This is like a one-off. I'm moving on to somebody hot next. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is one and done. I, I don't know if I can fucking deal with this. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go and eat all of this because I've eaten nothing all day in preparation for this. So uh, I'm going to sit down and fucking tear this apart. Thank you very much, mate. Another fat man has just cooked. <laughs> and uh, that's the end of the fucking episode. Say goodbye, Mishka. Goodbye, Mishka. Okay, just to give a little bit of postscript to this episode. Oh, look, I still have some in my beard. I managed to eat all of the chicken fried steak and all of the hash browns and all of the eggs. And I got halfway through the French toast and then the curse of the chicken fried steak and bottle of red wine. It, yeah, nope. I had to go to the bathroom, and I did a big sick. So, thank you, Mishka, for challenging me to make a recipe, which apparently, when all eaten together, induces vomiting. And ruins your day. So, cheers, mate. That was sick in my beard, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck off.